hello guys and welcome back to my channel for today's video we are going to be doing my monthly reading wrap up so all the books that i read in the month of june but i am also including a little life update in this video because if you haven't noticed i haven't posted a video in about a month which is the longest break i've taken in like i don't know six months or something like that because i the starting of 2023 i was like i'm gonna post a video every week so every tuesday i posted a video up until like june and so that was really tough to like do with a full-time job and also just life in general but I enjoyed doing it, but I needed a little bit of a break. So I'm going to tell you guys a little bit of a life update. It's pretty small, nothing crazy, but just kind of wanted to keep you guys in the loop. If you've been wondering where I am, why I'm not making as many videos, what videos maybe are coming in the future, and then we'll hop into the books. So the biggest life update um, to give you guys is that me and Mike are actually moving. Finally, we are moving out of my mom's house, if you don't know. The house that you have been seeing in all of my videos is actually my mom's house. We have been living here since February, like first or something of this year. And so it's been a little over five months and it has been great, but we also knew that this would be like a five to six month term of us living here. So we are finally moving somewhere else and it has been a process. We have decided to rent somewhere again because the housing market is just crazy. And we actually were in the process of building two homes two different times obviously but the process just didn't work out with how crazy everything is and so it's just been a whirlwind our whole like living situation but we have finally decided to rent again and found a really nice apartment that we're excited about it is a two bedroom which we've only had a one bedroom apartment since we've been married and then obviously here with my mom we have just our bedroom so we're excited to have a little bit more room that's kind of the biggest update we are moving pretty soon if everything goes well it's just been really crazy we were also in the process of a whole different apartment that we were going to live in and then that fell through for like crazy reasons so now we hopefully this is finally going to work out we're supposed to be moving in like a week or two i will keep you guys updated with that because i have some fun video ideas for that as well but that's just kind of the main thing i wanted to say right off the bat is we are moving so you will see videos in a new area which is really exciting and that kind of brings me to my next life update which will be my content i'm still going to do book stuff i'm still going to do some court reporting stuff as well because that is my full-time job but also I'm going to include more home decorating, more homemaking stuff. That has always been like my main like passion is like homemaking, like baking, cooking, cleaning. Like, I don't know. I just love like being a homemaker. Um, and in certain seasons, it's kind of coming on. Obviously living here with my mom, I feel like I haven't been able to really do that because my mom's here and she gets to cook for us a lot of times and it's just not my own kitchen. You know what I'm saying? So not my own space, which is fine but i'm ready to like have my own space again so i feel like i'll really be able to delve into that creative side of the homemaking and so i'm excited to film more videos that include that as well i am going to be filming a empty apartment tour soon so that will probably be the next video that you guys see and i'm really excited to do that so you can see like, the transformation of us decorating we are going to be furnishing and decorating the apartment really really slow because just money in general it's really expensive to furnish something and also we just kind of want to take it slow and not do it all at once and then be done we want to enjoy the process we kind of want to go room by room with what we're going to do we want to be really intentional we want to be kind of minimal very organized and so i'm excited to do that and show you guys the process of like furnishing and decorating a two-bedroom apartment now the next update that i kind of just wanted to talk about is the amount of content that i put out i was doing weekly videos as you guys know but i am going to not be doing that probably for a little while i'm gonna get back to that but i just feel like in this season little short season right now of us moving and everything like that it's been like i said a little bit crazy so i don't want to promise you guys something i can't give so at this time things will not be weekly but hopefully two to three videos a month that's kind of my goal so like i said i'll do an empty apartment tour um most likely there will not be a video up next week because that will be our moving week hopefully <laughs> so if you're excited to see that definitely stick around i do suggest maybe putting on like your post notifications since i'm not going to be posting now every tuesday at noon which i was doing before and i would love to get back to that soon and i probably will within the next month or two be getting back to that weekly routine it's just like during moving trying to get things settled in a little bit it is kind of a lot to like be doing that too so that's kind of the major things i wanted to talk about like i said it wasn't a huge life update but i kind of wanted to say 
something i'm trying to think if there's anything else i wanted to talk about oh if you watched my i think it was my last video i talked about my um acne and just my journey with all that and so if you haven't watched that i'll put like the link here or whatever so you can go watch it and i just talk about it a little bit at the very beginning of the video so if you just want to watch a few minutes of that that's cool because i'll give you guys a little bit of update but i had said that i went to like more of a natural doctor um what is he called like a functional nutritionist or something like that and i got a lot of blood drawn and i did get my results back and so if anyone who wants to update with that i'll just say it right now because a few people have asked me about it but um basically i'm very deficient in a lot of different vitamins which is good and bad i'm glad it's not something more major i kind of thought i would have severe hormone imbalances which i do think i still have a little bit but maybe these vitamins if i become no longer deficient that will also help my hormones and that's just going to be good for my overall health um if you don't know i also got off the pill a year and a half ago i think i have a whole video about getting off the pill if you want to watch that too it was very interesting um and i do feel like i feel different now than i did then i feel a lot better now um but i have just always struggled with acne but now knowing that i am deficient in some of these vitamins i'm going to be taking some new supplements and also i am trying out a little bit of a different diet in what i'm eating paying a little bit more attention um today's actually the first day that i'm kind of starting it and it's gonna be kind of paleo but I don't want to be too strict with it because I just know me and my mental health like I can't be too crazy with it and also just because my issues really is my skin and just a little bit of vitamin deficiency I don't think I need to go ham and like go crazy um I don't have any autoimmune disease so I'm thankful for that and I'm glad I don't have to like be super crazy with it super strict but I am going to try to stick to it at least for short term and see if it really helps my skin and helps me feel better that's really it that's the little update if there's anything else that you guys want to know comment down below ask me questions i always forget to like mention something in my videos because i don't really plan them out too much um on for a specific reason it's not because i'm like not trying to be organized but i kind of don't want to have a script of what i'm trying to say during my videos unless it's something really specific like when i was doing the wedding series and i was talking about things that we diy'd and cost and how we did it then i pretty much had a list because i had to talk about specific things but i try to kind of wing my videos like i have an idea of what i want to do and I kind of just wing it because I feel like that's the most natural version you get of me because if I start making lists, I will stick to them like a T. All right, now we're gonna get into these books that I read for the month of June. And I really wanna show you the back of them because they're so beautiful, they're so colorful. I will show you at the end, but as always, you will not know what books I'm talking about until I show you them. The first book that I read in the month of June was Happy Place by Emily Henry. And my last wrap up, I think it was my last wrap up, I was in the middle of reading this. So it was only like a day or two into June. So I have to include it into June. But this is Emily Henry's newest book. And I gave this, I think I gave this like a three and a half stars. And I think that that's a pretty good rating. I think I still feel that way. I always say like, I rate books on Goodreads right after I read them. But sometimes my feelings change after a while. And so you'll maybe see that if you follow me on goodreads or you'll just hear me talk about it at one time and then a little bit later i may have a different rating but i would say that three and a half stars is pretty good for this because i will say that i did like beach read i think better than this one so this one is about harriet and Wynne, and they have been dating for a while and they are actually engaged and they have this group of friends that they have been friends for a while and they're all really close and every summer they go to this summer house i think it's in maine yeah in maine and they just spend a week there and it's just the best time ever they love the house they love that week but this year when and harriet have actually broken up but they don't want to ruin their friends weekend or week in their amazing summer house so they decide to kind of you know fake date and act like they're still together act like everything is still fine still cool even though it's not so it's kind of that going through that with them so very interesting plot but i just feel like i was very into the first half of the book and then the second half of the book i don't know why it fell flat for me because so many people like cry with this book they love the second half of the book they think the first half is a little bit boring but i think it's because the anticipation i had during the first half of the book of like what was to come i think that's why i liked it a lot in the setting but it was okay it just wasn't like the most entertaining book to me like i definitely liked beach read more it was a little more cutesy this one was a little bit more in depth so maybe that's why i usually like really in-depth books and it wasn't too in depth but it definitely had some issues that it talked about it wasn't just a fluffy romance usually none of her books are like too fluffy but 
it was good but not my favorite emily henry book and i know that that's not really a common opinion but just mine i definitely think it's worth the read if you like emily henry or you want to read all of em emily henry's books i definitely think that that is a good one but not my favorite i would say i liked that one the same amount that i liked book lovers but i just haven't read people we meet on vacation i've heard that one's not that great so i just haven't really felt compelled to read it i like emily henry but i'm not like crazy obsessed with her but her writing was elevated in this book i will say that as you guys saw i'm gonna try to put also spice ratings with the star ratings i saw destiny sidwell do that and i was like that is such a good idea because i always try to let you guys know about spice but sometimes i forget or sometimes i forget how much spice was actually in the book and sometimes i feel weird recommending books because we don't know people's spice level when we're recommending books so i'm gonna put that here when i put the stars and hopefully that helps you guys out and i haven't read any i haven't read like any dark romance anything super crazy spicy so yes my spice tolerance is probably lower than some other readers but i'm just going to kind of go off what i guess my rating would be speaking of spice this one's going to have a lot of those little peppers because this is a court of silver flames by sarah j moss and this is the like i technically say like fifth book in the series even though i know it's not because there's like a novella before but this is the most new book that she has. There is no book after this that is out right now. I know she's in the process of writing it, hopefully, please. But this one is all about Nesta and Cassian. So if you haven't read any of the books, you have to read, you have to go in order with this series, okay? And yes, she is a hunker and this took me a little while. I only read five books this month, but I'm gonna go into depth about each of them so hopefully this video is still entertaining because some people read like 20 books a month which i just cannot do i will just admit that i feel like i'm kind of a slower reader usually my goal is like five to six books a month if i can get more than that great but that's like my enjoyable reading amount but yes this book was quite spicy and i almost dnf'd this book because it was too much spice for me so i gave this i think i gave this like a three and a half maybe four stars now that i'm thinking about it i think i would give this four stars because i really liked the ending oh my gosh like the last 100 pages was amazing and i'm really glad i didn't dnf it because it was so amazing and i got a little bit emotional like i loved this book but i will just say i did not like the spice level and those it was just way too many and honestly takes away from the storyline to me like yes we get it casting and us so like y'all are hot y'all are in love like y'all are both or Nesta's grumpy casting it's not really but we get it and have a couple spice scenes but like literally like 10 spice scenes and I was just like ready to get to the plot also there was like another kind of like half plot within this book that every time that part it was like a certain war scheming part every time that part came up um when it was talking about that I was really bored and so I was really into more of Nesta and her training and things like that and I really really liked the end of this book I give this a solid four stars not my favorite in the series but i did like it and it's worth reading if you're reading the series if you're okay with spice i will just say that because that this one is like way spicier and honestly that's why i didn't give it i wouldn't even give it a four and a half stars because that's how much i did not like the spice part it was a good four stars the next book that i read is the house across the lake by riley sager and i have read one other riley sager book and it was lock every door well you'll see in a second maybe more than one but previously to this book i read lock every door and i gave that one four stars and i'm gonna give this one four stars as well and i really love riley sager which by the way i just learned that that's a pen name that's not his real name which is really interesting but this one is about a woman and she goes to her family's lake house and she's kind of been struggling she's like a struggling actress and she is struggling with some addiction and so she decides to go to this lake house and well actually she kind of gets told to go to this lake house and to spend time there and not drink and just focus on getting better and so she goes there she's alone but she doesn't really focus on getting better she's kind of going downhill and then she finds these binoculars and she decides to look across the lake at this house that has all glass walls really big beautiful house and she sees this couple and she doesn't personally know this couple i think she's maybe heard of them but she sees them and they're like beautiful to her and then she one day meets the wife on the lake for specific reasons i'm not going to say too much and they talk and they get along pretty well and then when she is looking and peeping and being a weirdo later looking at them 
she sees that there is some not so great things within their marriage she can tell something's wrong and then all of a sudden the wife goes missing and she can't see her she can't find her she can't call her, she can't locate her so she knows something is going wrong and of course she's suspecting the husband so very interesting plot i loved this book but the end and this is the same thing to the other one that i read lock every door why i didn't give them five stars is because i loved the books this one in Lock Every Door is kind of the same thing in the sense of I loved the story until the very end when they kind of came out with the big reveal of like what was happening. It was a little kooky. It was a little nutty. It was a little weird, like a little far-fetched, you know, but we love that in a thriller. So I think that's why I really like Riley Sager in his writing. And you'll see later on, I have something really excited I want to talk about, but he's just kind of nutty and i think i kind of like it sometimes i don't like that weird goes to a weird place but in lock every door i would say it was a little weirder than this one like just look up lock every door read the back very interesting book but the reveal in that one too was quite strange but i still enjoyed the book somehow he just like gets me even though He's a little cuckoo. After that, I needed a fluffy little romance. So I read When in Rome by Sarah Adams. And this is the first book in this little series. I don't know if this series has like a name for it. They're like standalone books. So you don't have to read them in order. As you guys know, I didn't. Last month, I read Practice Makes Perfect. And I loved that book. I gave it four and a half stars. It was super fluffy, super cute. But I don't know if it was just what I needed at the moment, but I loved that book. And I give this one four stars because I did like Practice Makes Perfect better, but I did love this book. It was cute, just like the other one better. Um, and yeah, I'm not gonna tell you too much what this one's about because it's like a little series and it's basically just a fluffy romance. But this is Amelia and she is like a singer and she decides she wants to go to this really small town and she loves Audrey Hepburn and so she was watching the movie, is it called When in Rome? I think it's called Roman Holiday or something like that. One of her older, Audrey Hepburn's older movies and she decided that she wants to go to Rome but Rome was too far so she wanted to go to Rome, Kentucky and that's a small town that she ends up in and she meets Noah who owns this little pie shop and it goes from there. So it was a cute book, but I did like Practice Makes Perfect Better who is about Annie, who is actually Noah's sister and Will, which is Amelia's bodyguard. So they are interconnected. So I do suggest reading them in order. And I do wonder if I would have liked When in Rome better if I would have read it first. And not that I didn't like it, I liked it, I gave it four stars. But I wonder if I would have liked it better than Practice Makes Perfect. And maybe it was because I read Practice Makes Perfect first. I don't know. They're cute fluffy romances. I really suggest them. Um, and they also have no spice, but it still gives like little hints of a little bit of steam, a little bit of tension, which is like perfect for me. It's closed door, fade to black. That's perfect for me. Okay, so the last book that I read for the month of June, and this is my favorite book in this whole stack, and I am really debating honestly on giving this five stars, but right now, this is very crazy and silly, but I'm giving it a 4.75, I think. I don't know, it might be five. Maybe I'll update you guys if I make it a five, but this is the only one left by Riley Sager. This is his brand new book. It came out at the end of June. Let's just have a moment for this beautiful color block, this beautiful cover. Beautiful cover, I love this cover. I think his writing was so much more elevated in this book. I do like his writing in the previous books I've read by him, but I knew I had to read this book because I've liked his previous books. I was like, I'm gonna read every book he comes out with. Hopefully I'm gonna get to do that. And I freaking love this book. And the only reason why I wouldn't give it five stars, and I'll tell you guys what it's about, but the only reason why right now I'm not giving it five stars is because at the end, when all these twists and reveals come, there was almost too many twists. So I guess like one part of it, which is fine because there were other things that I didn't guess, but there was like so many things it really made you think. It kind of reminded me of Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney in the sense of like at the end of that book, there's so many twists and turns. It's like, you really need to like think about it, which I don't mind. I like a book that makes you think, but it was almost too much. And I think that's why I want to give this five stars, but like 4.75, Four and a half like really really close to five stars that's the only reason why i wouldn't but the vibe of this book they're calling it like i read somewhere where it says like a gothic goth addictive gothic chiller chiller thriller that's what they're calling it i just think that is literally perfect the word gothic didn't think i would like like a gothic thriller obsessed with this book obsessed with the setting this is about a house that was built in 19 or it wasn't built in 1929 
but it is set back in time to 1929 and it is also dual timelines so they jump from 1929 to i think it's the 80s so it is all kind of set back in time but in 1929 this family lived at this mansion basically on the cliffside and again i think this is evolved in maine and it is a wife and husband and two daughters virginia and lenora and in 1929 a murder happens in the house and everyone is dead besides lenora so she gets blamed i think she's like 17 at the time she gets blamed for the murder of her parents and her sister so this crazy story about the hope family that's her last name hope this crazy story about the hope family you know is passed down for generations everyone knows about the hope mansion no one wants to go there and it is now the 80s it's like 56 years later and lenora is still alive but she is confined to the house because she has like paralysis she can't speak she can't walk she can only move her left arm and she now needs a new caregiver a new nurse who is with her all the time and the new caregiver kit is assigned to take care of lenora but she knows about lenora's like family and her history and her past and so she's kind of creeped out by that but she's like a 70 something year old woman you know confined to bed so how can you kind of be scared of that so it really gives me verity vibes but verity was like 10 times like darker and twisted like this is dark and twisted but like in a good fun way not in a like makes your stomach turn like if you've read verity you know especially that one chapter oh my gosh so it kind of gives me verity vibes because it's like a lady confined to her bed but is she really like sick like what's going on the house is weird the house is creepy the house is like it, like falling off the cliff almost because it's like tilted because it's been on this cliff for so long and the weather is crazy and it's just such a cool scenery and the way he describes it i could totally picture the mansion picture the characters i love all the characters in this book like it was just so good the twists were good but there were a lot at the end i couldn't guess some of them but i really 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 suggest this book if you want a good thriller and you're kind of in the mood for a little bit dark a little bit scary because let me tell you i was listening to a playlist on spotify and it was like a psychological thriller playlist um instrumental because i love listening to instrumental stuff when i'm reading it scared the crap out of me so when i was reading this in bed like late at night and i was listening to that music i was so so scared luckily michael was right there but just warning i don't know if it was the music that was scaring me or if the book is like actually like creepy scary but it was really really fun read definitely my favorite read of the month okay guys so those are all the books i read for the month of june and a little life update let me know if you guys have read any of these books or other books that you would like to see me read comment down below make sure to like this video subscribe put on those post notifications if you want to keep up with me because like i said i'm going to be a little bit sporadic for a little while and i'm just being real but i'm still going to put content out there again if there's a video that you guys want to see let me know because sometimes that encourages me to film more so Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope to see you guys soon and I'll keep you guys updated. Bye.